All right, we're live. Episode number 81 of the Before the Trainwreck series. The only show on the internet that shows you how to uh, not make a train wreck out of your life. So leading up to these shows, I usually, you know, go through my material. I, you know, of course, printed up the chapter and highlighted some stuff I wanted to cover. Then I got distracted on Twitter and social media with the pandemic. <laughs> and you start looking at some of these clips and everything. And it's just like, I don't know, man. I don't know. This time last year, I could go to the gym anytime I wanted, have a sauna, no limits on the floor, spend as much time as you want. Now, limits 10. You have to carry around a special spray bottle like a pleb or a mask everywhere you go. Can't use any of the facilities, and you got to be out of there within the hour. I don't know. I keep seeing... Sorry about the audio. I keep seeing a lot of... Uh, crap from medical professionals that are saying, okay, we just like enough's enough. I don't know about you guys. Comment below. I came across this uh, audio piece. Actually here, I'll just grab the tweet. You guys can look at it later. Watch this video. When you click through, <clears throat> it'll take you to bit, bit you, but it'll try to warn you first about leaving. I'll just ignore that and continue. Just a four minute video from this uh, uh chairman who works for a company that does uh, testing on COVID. So they actually build the equipment that does the testing. And he's got a few things, an interesting uh, bunch of thoughts to share. So check that out. All right. Women's rules, how they make and break them. How many pages is this? Oh, this is a short one. This will be good. We can get this done in about half an hour, 45 minutes. All right. Check that link out later. So, Let's go, go, go. So you guys have probably heard that women make rules for men that they deem to be beta and they'll break them for men that they deem to be alpha. Now, there's a lot of debate out there about, oh, alpha, sigma, beta, you know, be this, be that. And it's like, these are placeholder terms, okay? I mean, I feel like sometimes I shouldn't have to explain this, but I'm going to explain it because people always get all bent out of shape. <clears throat> it's a placeholder term. Beta, less desirable, weaker. Society doesn't uh, you know, look fondly upon, doesn't relish, you know, sort of stuff. Alpha, strong, virtuous, masculine. Women want to be with them. Men want to be them sort of thing. You know, if they're not them, they get pissed off and sometimes they go down the doom pill path. But um, at the end of the day, the debate is irrelevant. There are men that women deem to be alpha, and there's men that women deem to be beta. So since they're the sexual selectors, let's defer to them for point and case in this bit that I want to cover. Now, so there's cute little good girl librarians that will make you wait patiently three months for basic missionary when you were 20. But she'll end up in bed with Chad 15 minutes after meeting him at the foam cannon party in Ibiza on her 23rd birthday with her girlfriends, right? Now, you can be certain that she'll do everything that she said she wouldn't do with you with him, right? Never forget that women will break rules for alphas and make them for betas. So when a woman says something like, I don't do that, in your head, if she's saying, I don't do that, she's basically moving you more towards the beta category. And you need to add in your head with me. So if you say something to her, like, I want to do this in the bedroom, or I want to introduce this in the bedroom, let's do that. You know, the intimacy level stuff, let's just deal with that more specifically. And she says, I don't do that. Then in your head, you have to insert with me. Okay. Because she will go through those sexual gymnastics with the chat. They'll always break rules for an alpha and make them for beta. It's always been that way. Let me tell you the story about uh, the Amazonia. And I think this is covered in a little more detail in a couple of pages of the book, but um, rather than reading, I'll just tell it to you. So I had this date with this chick that um, showed up and my height cap is, I don't know, I'm going to say five, nine ish or so five, like anything more than five, 10. It's like, I don't want a Sasquatch, right? I like, you know, buck 30, buck 35 pounds. You want a bit of a spinner. You can pick them up and, you know, anyway, she shows up, she's about six foot tall. She never said that was her height. 
of course, you know, it's a dating app. So the pictures are old. It's the right angle, you know, the different angles. And all you saw was boobies and you're like, okay, you know, let's grab a drink. But this chick shows up and she's about six foot tall. She's probably about 25 pounds heavier than what her pictures looked and older, of course, because the pictures are from five years ago, but she's still really, really cute. So she's still solid enough to like, I'm there. Let's just grab this drink and get the hell out of here. This was an interesting one though. I actually enjoyed this conversation and this is just one part of the conversation that was functional. So don't always dismiss somebody that shows up, um, not with your expectations. You know, sometimes you can still get something out of the conversation anyway. So this is where I got the, um, women will make rules for betas and break them for alphas. And they'll flip back and forth sometimes depending on how you pass the shit test. And she said to me, um, you know, within a few moments of, of sitting down that she had this like eight date rule. She won't sleep with anybody unless it's eight dates. I'm like, okay, here we go. Here we go. Already she's trying to negotiate desire and when things are gonna happen and Captain Bossy Pants, all because she had some bad experiences in the past, right? So you're sitting there listening to her lecture you about how she's gonna make you wait eight dates, like as if I care. I mean, I wasn't even particularly interested in her at this point, but I'm like, look, I don't negotiate when these things happen and I don't follow these silly rules. It gets in the way of intimacy. Give her a few more sound bites of this and that. Basically, told her to pound sand, and she takes a swig of her drink. And she had she had her boobs in this low cut top with a big push up kit going on. I'm not sure what was going on with the push up kit, but it was pretty solid. But there was a big huff there. She takes a sip and she says, "All right, let's go bang in the bathroom," and then gestures over to the washroom and the bar. Now, I don't normally turn away aggressive advances like this, but this is one of the few times in my life that I did. And I just laughed. I, you know, I just thought to myself, two, three minutes ago, you're lecturing and setting limits around when intimacy is going to happen based on your schedule, based on your experiences, because this is the way that you want to do things. And what she's essentially doing is she's shit testing me. She's trying to find out what this guy is all about. Because women will do this, right? Like they'll always in, look, competency test. I'm going to try to avoid swearing as much as possible because it is, you know, the YouTube's. So she's going to competency test you. Is this guy beta? Is this guy alpha? I'm not sure. You know, he looks like he's losing his hair. Maybe he's a bit of a dork. I'm not sure if I dig his vibe. Let me shit test him. So she throws these lyrics at me and I knock him out of the park and then she wants to go and use the bathroom as her own private brothel. So it can flip very, very quickly. In this case, it happened within a matter of like 20 minutes, right? These are the kinds of things that women do. And you have to understand that um, if you want to have her best, if you want to have a good experience around women, you, of course, want to operate in an alpha frame. There's alpha frame, there's beta frame, and there's some stuff kind of in between. You know, Some people will go in segment, omega, and they'll make up all these other new categories. Let's just keep it simple, okay? Alpha seed, beta need. Anyway, guys that operate in a beta frame will get cheated on far, far more than alpha males. They get left, they get divorced more often. This is just what ends up happening, right? She doesn't view the guy as his best. It's just a horrible, horrible way to be in a relationship. You see these guys, you know, I bet right now there's somebody here watching. It's like, ah, oh, I don't want to run into Bob or Bill or Matt at Thanksgiving or over the holidays because I don't have to deal with his crap and his misery with his miserable <laughs> relationship. You know what I'm talking about? You do not want to be converted into a beta. Now, Women will spend years changing her man and then wonder what the hell happened to the guy that she fell in love with. And they inadvertently do this stuff. This is, this is just part of female nature. Um, it, can take, it can take quite a few years. And a lot of the times you don't notice it happening, if I'm being honest. Uh, it, just, it just happens through small concessions here. Like It starts with basic stuff like, hey, Rich, put your white socks in the white hamper and your dark socks in the dark hamper and don't brush your teeth over there because you're going to get toothpaste on the carpet. And like, you know, small things like this here and there, whereas, you know, in the past previously, you just kind of threw your laundry wherever you felt like it and you'd walk all over the house without any clothes on, brushing your teeth wherever the hell you wanted because you're a man and your entire house is your castle. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you start to get all these restrictions and limitations and boundaries put around your life. And as you comply with each one of them, you start going through the process of betatization through a thousand concessions. It turns men from a pet that she loves and admires into a plow horse that she sees nothing more than a utility, a utility that she is going to emotionally abuse and doesn't want to bang enthusiastically anymore. 
If you aren't aware and you don't control the frame of the relationship, then chances are this is going to happen to you. It will make you weak, soft, poor, undesirable to your woman. This process of betatization by a thousand concessions is a genuine threat, especially if you cohabitate and get into a relationship and if you have kids. Guys that lose access to their kids, I can't tell you how many women I met after I got divorced with children in tow that were all divorced, of course, that left their husbands because eight out of 10 times it's women leaving the men. And the lack of contact the father has with his own children, the amount of money he flows to her, the amount of bitching that you got to listen to about that, all because she deemed the guy as a beta. And I've seen some of these guys, right? Like you see them like, you know, the younger uh, photos where they have like the, um, you know, the barbed wire, like around their biceps sort of thing. Like they were dudes at one point, many of these guys, but a lot of men go through this process in a marriage. And if you're not managing the frame, and this is where frame really matters quite a, quite a bit. A lot of people go, oh, it's frame rich. You know, what is this whole frame thing? In every relationship, one person enters the other's frame. Okay. The man enters her frame or she enters his frame happens all the time. Sometimes it's back and forth, right? But at the end of the day, if she's not operating in your frame and you're operating in her frame, you will go through betatization through a thousand concessions. This is where the risks start to you know, become problematic. If you get divorced, you lose custody of your kids. You might only see them every other weekend and like a Wednesday night for dinner. My uh, lawyer calls that the screw over daddy deal. Uh, these things will happen to beta men more often than alpha men. Women don't divorce alpha guys. They don't They don't run off and start banging somebody else or hanging out with Kevin from sales or Steve from accounting. By the way, Steve from accounting edited my book. Did you know that? If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that by now. But that's how it goes. They just don't run off on guys that they're uh, happy with, guys that they look at and they're hypergamous hindbrain is like, yeah, everything's fine. I dig this guy's vibe. Why would I want to do anything with Kevin from sales? They just don't. Um, anyway, so often you'll get introduced to her family, you know, around the holidays. We got Thanksgiving coming up. I know some places you guys will be able to get together and other places you just won't because of the scandemic, but it is what it is. But, you know, you'll be introduced to family and, you know, ah, this is rich. You know, the entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. And they'll tell the big story and everybody gathers around and they're like, oh, he's a swell guy and he's so classy and all that sort of stuff. And they all fondly look upon him. But over time, and you'll see this five years, seven years, 10 years down the road, the woman's interest in her man wanes slowly over time. You know, they say, uh, I think it was Esther Perel in one of her books, um, desire in women just tanks. It just goes straight off the cliff, okay, very, very quickly over time. Whereas with guys, it's a lot slower. Why does that happen? I think a lot of it has to do with where we live in, you know, the world today and the way society is. But I also think it has a lot to do with the way that guys manage relationships. Like too many guys bend the knee to women far too often for very little value whatsoever. Anyway, so back to the thousand concessions. Let me grab this uh, question here from one of the channel members. What's he saying? Good night, Rich. Off topic, I'm building muscles and learning game. I'm a programmer in Argentina, 30 years old, earning $7,800 a year. How can I learn to make six figures book courses you recommend? <sighs> well, that's a different conversation and completely off topic from tonight's show, brother. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll, I'll just set that one aside. Uh, there's really a lot to unpack there. Maybe I'll, um, maybe what I'll do for you guys is uh, I'll do a call and Q&A show. Uh, let's say next Monday, I'll take a break from all of these chapters and everything else. I actually like doing the Q and a show, so I'll throw one out there next week. It'll be an all call in. So, um, so we talked about betatization by a thousand concessions. Yes, yes, yes. You ever set stand up? I think it was Chris Rock or Tucker, you know, just talks about the stamp. Just get a stamp, just stamp everything. Yes, 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 honey. Yes, 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 yes. That's betatization right? You're saying yes to everything. You're yielding, you're bending the knee. It's okay to say no, guys. It's absolutely, totally fine and okay. Nope, we're not doing that. I should start chirping you. Some women do anyway. Nope. Not listening to that nonsense either. Get your golf clubs and hit the, uh, you know, hit the pars, go to the gym, do whatever you like. Don't listen to that crap. Um, 
there's really a lot in this chapter. I don't want to give it all away. I just want to highlight the big, big points. Uh, do, 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 alphas, alphas. Oh, the worst from beta is a cuckold. Yeah. This is, um, this is something that was a surprising stat. I learned that something like anywhere from 10 to 30% of men are cucked, uh, unknowingly raising children that aren't theirs. So that's, that's the unknowing cuckoldry. And then there's the guys that knowingly cuck themselves and they willingly raise other men's children you know they start getting into it with single moms and these don't work out very well most often uh what's that there sorry guys Streamyard's really pumping out these comments in a strange way i'll get to that super chat in just one sec hold on <clears throat> listen if you're going to take on the burden and the risk of a marriage or a long-term relationship, it's far more work than just dating or spinning plates. It really is. I'm not even kidding. Because the risk profiles, Andrew Cruz says, where do you draw the line between compromise and just giving the girl what she wants? Or is compromising not really a thing we should be doing? Uh, you know what I'm going to rely on to respond to this is going to be 16 commandments. Let's just pull it up because I'll just I'll just cite it verbatim. But one of them is on uh, I think it's number four. Don't play by her rules. Actually, let me call it cover four and five. Let me cover four and five. So let's put this up here for you because this is this is something that's bound to come up. Let me share the screen here. Stand by, brothers. There we go. Uh, put it up over here. It's a little bit better that way. If you allow a woman to make the rules, she will resent you with a seething contempt. Even a rapist cannot inspire. The strongest woman and the most strident feminist wants to be led by and to submit to a more powerful man. Guys, it doesn't matter how much toxic feminism bangs into women's head the narrative women still want to be led by and protected by a more powerful man. They always do. A more powerful man is a key word here. Polarity is the core of a healthy, loving relationship. She does not want the prerogative to walk all over you with her capricious demands and merciful moods. Her emotions are a hurricane, her soul a saboteur. Think of yourself as a bulwark against her tempest. When she gasps for a pillar to steady herself against, the whipping winds or yearns, for an authoritative figure to foil her worst instincts. I love how this guy writes. It is you has to be there, strong, solid, unshakable, and immovable. Let's talk about the golden ratio because this kind of comes to Andrew's point. You give your woman two thirds of everything that she, everything that, that she gives you, right? For every three calls or texts, give her two back. Three declarations of love, earn two in return. Three gifts, two nights out. Take her to displays of, of affection. Stop until she's answered with a third. When she speaks, you reply with fewer words. When she emotes, you emote less. The idea behind the golden ratio is twofold. It establishes your greater value by making her chase you, and it demonstrates to you that you have the self-restraint to avoid getting swept up in her personal dramas. See, the problem, guys, is most of you have been conditioned your entire life like the good little blue-pilled plebs that you're supposed to be to bend the knee and to equal to become less so that she can become more and she doesn't want that refraining from reciprocating everything she does for you in equal measure instills in her the proper attitude of belief in your higher status and her deepest loins this is what she truly wants women want to be with a giant guys they do not want to be with somebody that they deem lesser value than them you will end up with problems in a long-term relationship or a marriage if women look down at you, if they speak disparagingly to you, if they start making rules, for example, around the relationship, and especially if they start making rules around intimacy, like, like chore play, like, oh, uh, I need you to do this, that, and the other thing before we're going to have some basic missionary starfish sex, right? You, once that starts to happen, you're completely losing the frame and falling into betatization through a thousand concessions. You got to learn to say no. It's a complete sentence. Just say no. And as difficult as it sounds, the burden of performance is on men, right? Men must become. You must do the work. You must pursue excellence. 
right? It's it's ex it's expected of you as a man, but not for women. I keep have to. I feel like I have to emphasize this so much: is you do it for you. You do it so you have options. You do it so that you're the best version of yourself. So that if a crummy woman or person, business partner, customer comes into your life and you're spoiled for choice and you don't want to deal with them because they're an anchor, because they're an energy vampire, you can basically tell them to fuck off, right? That's really the entire point of it is to have those options. But far too many guys have far few options, you know, because she smells pretty. Oh, she let me touch her boobie. So I married her. Castle says, hey, Rich, why would a woman who is giving it up daily, multiple times a day, still decide to cheat or monkey branch? Well, I know a guy that married a prostitute. And he didn't know it. And she was like that. There's a handful of women out there um, that are a little messed in the head. Um, and as you get older, there's more of them out there. Um, I saw a stat the other day on, um, consumables. I think it was for antidepressants and SSRIs and stuff like that. Um, and by a wide margin, I think something like 80% of the consumption over the age of 40 is by women, not by men. Um, so there's probably some out there that have un undiagnosed, you know, disorders, or maybe they don't get diagnosed till later on in their uh, life until they can get it under control. But, you know, there's a demographic out there. there's a part of demographic that's a little cuckoo for cocoa puffs and they might do that uh it's not necessarily because the guy's a beta i mean honestly if he's he's the highest value guy that she can possibly do uh, most women will not go outside of that relationship right especially if they respect the guy right if they really respect the guy and they see him as a top shelf man and the and the best that she can do like her apex alpha rarely ever happens. So women that behave like this, it's out of character. There's usually something going on in their head. Uh, let me pull that out there. And yeah, I think, I think that's it. I mean, I could have, I could have read the entire chapter for you and gone through it in a lot more depth, but the real point of it all is in the summary for this particular piece is if you're going to get into an LTR, if you're not just spinning plates or just dating, right? Like if you're going to get into something longer term, like LTR to a marriage type of scenario, and you allow yourself to go through the betatization through a thousand concessions process, or she deems you as being not her first choice. We've talked about genuine burning desire. I might have to spend some more time on that one. But at the end of the day, it's a problem and you're going to have a higher probability of getting divorce raped, having your heart broken, getting one-itis, losing a big chunk of your financial resources, maybe siring children that you never get to see that some other asshole ends up spending more time with. There's all kinds of things that can happen. So that's why I'm suggesting to you guys, identify what's going on in the frame of the relationship, whether she's operating in your frame or you're operating in hers and whether or not she views you as an alpha or a beta. Again, she's going to make rules for you if she sees you as a beta. She's going to break them for you if she sees you as an alpha, right? There's going to be things that she's going to do with you as an alpha that she wouldn't do with the beta. And again, you have to say in your head, if, you know, if you're looking to do something with her and then she's constantly telling you, well, I don't do that or that's not something that I will do, Rich. Always that in your head with me. So just use that. Think about it, okay? All right. Let's wrap up on that note and throw some banners up, do some cl closing thoughts because my book is done. I have the final copy to upload. I'm just getting the barcode inserted on the back for the ISBN number. So hopefully in the next week, if you're on my email list, you will get notified of the availability. Um, can I just put this up here? Yeah. So if you just go to entrepreneursandcars.com right here forward slash red flags opt into that list you'll get notified first when the book's out or just follow me on social i'll i'll post it when it's out there um other banners i got to deal with channel sponsor is boom right over my shoulder here ground egg soap um i love this stuff scott just sent me another uh, care box with uh, the beard oil and the sticks and the and the new ones these are the new ones up here that one over there has pumice in it. I love that. That is a great soap. Anyway, they're all pheromone infused, handmade in the US. Um, you know, at a time, I guess, when pandemics are shutting down businesses, still able to get soap out. So that's good. You guys are showering anyway. So if you want to support the channel, grab some of that. 
Scott's been a great uh, channel supporter. If you just go to coopersoap.com or if you're watching the replay, I'll pin it in the top comment. You just click through there. It's already taken care of. All right. Can't wait to get your book. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy it. It's like 210 pages. Um, here, I'll throw it up on the screen. I'll give you a quick preview before I go. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is the remove? Stop screen, stare screen, application window. There we go. So, I mean, I could have just thrown that up in the screen and read it, but here I'll run you through the chapters and a little bit of the intro here. Uh, the female primary social order, I just kind of covered that on where we're at today. And I just covered women's rules and how they make and break them, why that's important to understand. Genuine burning desire is really, really important. Um, I can't remember if I've done a video on this in the last couple of months, but if not, I'm due for that. So I'll cover that. You already know about the red flags. If you opt into the email list, you get that. Really important to spend a good amount of time on single mothers with the risks in there. Hire slowly but fire quickly is a very important concept that I talk about that most people in red pill space don't. Um, I learned this from my business experience. So there's about uh, a dozen pages on that. Talk about looks, money, status, and game and how to max on those areas. Manage an endocrine system, TRT protocols. Uh, managing your energy, AKA the Fs you give, okay? Uh, getting to girls online. I've got an entire chapter on running online game. Uh, the origins of sapiens, which is originally the most promiscuous primates that have ever walked this planet. Some crazy stats in there. I, I have about 25 pages on that. Talk about motorcycles, violence, when men go their own way, why smart men avoid marriage, and there's a glossary at the end too. So anyway, I won't give away any more than that. That's it. I hope you guys uh, grab it when it becomes available. It'll be out definitely before Christmas, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, I'm looking forward to getting your feedback on it anyway. I'm, uh, I'm not an author, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Anyway, see you guys in the next broadcast. Smash the like button, leave me a comment below, and I will reserve next Monday for an all Q&A show. So any questions you have, anything to do with just leveling up, I will take them, anything. We'll, we'll call it an Ask Me Anything show. Anyway, see you guys in the next uh, broadcast. Peace out.